So, and if anybody has any questions, as always, put stuff in the chat, and when I'm done, we can open it up for questions. Um, so this weekend, this weekend, sorry, this week, we are talking about modules. Or sorry, we're talking classes and modules. And what we're really doing here is we are introducing object-oriented programming in this class. Uh, there are two basic underlying methods for programming. There's functional and there's object-oriented. Um, languages like Java are object-oriented. Languages like C and C, C is functional. So it doesn't have the concept of a class. It, um, it does not use as much structure. Or let me, let me rephrase that. There is no structure imposed on you by a language like C, where there is structure imposed on you by a language like Java. Python splits it down the middle. You can be a functional language or you can be an object-oriented language. Up until now, we have always done functional programming. We have not combined all of these things. We haven't combined variables and methods to create something new, and that something new would be a type. But that's what we're going to do this week. We are creating our own types, and that's actually a pretty powerful thing. And this lecture is going to go a little different than the previous lectures. I'm not going to show you short snippets of code. When we're done, I'm going to show you a fully working class that's in its own module and how to use it, uh, because that's really what the culmination of this chapter is about. So what are the concepts? The basic concepts are data abstraction, which means you're hiding the implementation. So in a function, you could define a function. You could put all of the code that you needed to in that function to do whatever that function needed to do and call it by name. And you didn't have to worry about those lines of code because somebody else wrote them and somebody else tested them. So that's one form of data abstraction. But the real data abstraction happens when you have object-oriented programming and classes and objects. And that is because you can combine variables with their values along with functions and have them all grouped into the same box. Um, Sorry, we're then now going to encapsulation. I shouldn't have got ahead of myself. Encapsula encapsulation keeps states, variables, and methods private. Again, it's not exposed to the outside world. It's defined in the class. And you will use it in a very specific way. Um, there's specific terminology and there's specific syntax. Inheritance, you can create a class and then have another class, get all of the stuff in that one class, and then you can extend it. You can create more in it. Um, we're not going to do a lot with inheritance in this class because they don't really go through it in Zybooks. Um, more to the pity because I think that they should have an entire module just on inheritance to get it right. But anyway, <laughs> they don't. Um, Polymorphism is accessing objects of different types through the same interface. And we will see this when we start overloading operators in a little bit. Um, polymorphism and inheritance work hand in hand. Actually, all of these work hand in hand to allow you really to encapsulate your code. And now why is that important? Why do I particularly love object-oriented programming? Well, it's all about reusability. Um, up until now, I've been able to define a function and reuse the code in that function by just calling the function by name. But now, 
I can have variables and a whole bunch of functions, lists, you know, just as many functions as I need. And I can set all that up in a variable and I can pass it around. So I have all of the information about, let's say I have a chair, okay? And a chair is something I sit in, but a chair can be lots of different things. Um, and before I have a chair, somebody has gone out and designed that chair. They've created a blueprint for that chair. And then they create many chairs based on that blueprint. And that is the height of reusability because I can create many, many, many chairs from the diagram and the design of the chair. So I can reuse that design again and again and again and again. So what we're doing is we're learning how to design things by using object-oriented programming techniques, and then we're going to learn how to make things from it. Um, so, and, and if I didn't say it, I think I did. We're naming things here. So you've always got a name to something, and that name becomes your type. So the building blocks for object-oriented programming. Well, you have a class. That's the first thing you start with. And a class is the design. That's basically what it is. I am designing something in software. And that something could be a time clock. That something could be, I don't know, some, some very complex algorithm. Um, it could be, you know, a map. So there's all kinds of things. What, whatever you can think of, you can usually define in a class. And a class has certain properties. It has a name, and that name has to be unique to every other class that is in the running Python scripts memory space, kind of. And I'll explain the kind of later when we get into modules. Um, a class contains variables and functions. Um, a class is a definition only. It doesn't really exist. Just like when we first did functions and we did def and then we named the function and then we put lines of code and we saw that Python skipped that. It was not part of the running code until we actually called it by name. Well, the same thing with a class. A class is a definition and it doesn't exist in any way that I can access it in the code until I create an object from it using very specific syntax. Um, and my example here is you have um, the blueprint um, is you have a house blueprint, but you can't actually walk in the door to that house because it's just a blueprint. It's just something printed on paper. But so that's the design of the house, and then you have to create a house. So the second major building blocks are objects. An object is an instantiation of a class. Now, what do I mean by instantiation? Instantiation means that I have told Python to go out and grab memory space based on the definition of that class, based on the variables, based on the functions, and Put it aside in a variable. And then I can call that variable and, and call functions on it or set variables on it. Um, so an object is an access point to all the functionality defined in a class. I can't get to a class. I can't get to all that great functionality I've written until I create an object from it. And you can create as many objects from the same class as your memory space will allow. So let me check to make sure. Are there any questions? No. OK. So let's talk about the mechanics of a class. As always, there's going to be some new keywords. So class is a new keyword. And what it tells Python is that I'm defining a new type. 
the name that comes after this will be the name of a type in Python. And that I'm going to group variables and methods together. Now, the name that I'm giving my class is time. Now, class names follow the same kind of rules that variable names do. So you have to be, you can't just name a class whatever you want. You, you, have, to, you have to be somewhat careful and follow the same rules that you would when, you were, when you're creating a variable. And then we have the colon, okay? Now up till now we've used the colon in code blocks. You know, colon after a function definition line colon after an if statement, because I'm going to have a block of code after that. Well, a class is, in fact, a block of code. It's just a bigger block of code that encompasses more things. So a class, at a minimum, has to have a function, and those are two underscores. It's underscore, underscore, and knit, underscore, underscore. That is very specific. You can't have it anywhere else in Python other than in a class. And it's called the constructor. And we'll delve into constructors in a minute. But the constructor is a special function that tells Python how you want that class, an object that is created from this class, set up when you first create it. And then there's this word self. Um, self is the object. And so, and it's what makes it what they call an instance function. An instance function has an awareness of the object that it came from. So remember, the class is a blueprint, the object is the real thing. So the class has to have, the, the functionality in the class has to have some way of knowing where it came from. The word self is how it knows that. So self is, is the object that was created from this class, and we're giving it a, a reference to that object. Now, why are we doing that? Well, because I can, I can create as many objects as I want from the time class. So I have to know what the values, the state information is associated with that object. And in this case, I have to set the state information or the variables to, um, to values. So I, this, this has class time. I'm defining a function called underscore, underscore, knit, underscore, underscore. This is, in fact, a function. So I got to have opening and closing parentheses. I have to have, at minimum, the word self in there, the keyword self. And then I have to end it with a colon because it is a function. Inside that function, I am defining what they call instance variables. Our is an instance variable. And minute is an instance variable. And I know they're instance variables because they have the word self before them. And by the way, self is separated from our by a dot. Okay, so the, nomen the, the syntax is self dot and then the variable name. And self dot and then the variable name. And this is how the state variables are actually defined in a class. So I am telling Python here, every time I create an object from class time, you're going to at minimum define two variables. One's called hour, one's called minute, and I know that I'm going to do that because I have the word self with a period in front of them. And for this class, we're just going to have kind of a running, um, this running rectangle for the time class, because I want you to see how we grow the class. And also because if you if you are going out and you're going to do some design stuff, this is one of the um, this is one of the shapes that you will use if you do something called UML. 
which is, I think, unified modeling language. It's a way of designing software pictorially before you actually write the code. It's uh, flow charts are the predecessor to this. So mechanics of an object. An object is an instance of a class. So the class is the blueprint. The object is the thing. Okay, and it's created from the blueprint. So I've got my class time, and now I want to do something with it because these are just words in a script right now. Until I actually say, "Hey, Python, create something from this," from this, nothing will ever happen. So how do I create an object? I create an object by having a variable. I know it's uh, a variable because it's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. And on the right-hand side of that single equal sign, I'm going to use the name of the class. So in this case, time. And I'm going to use an open and close parenthesis. And that's because what I'm really telling Python to do is go out, find this type called time, and call its constructor. So that's what I'm doing with that, and that's why you need these two, uh, the open and closing parentheses, is because what's really happening is I'm going up here, and I am calling the constructor. And that's how it's created. And when you look at it, you can see here's my definition, and then I have start time with values action. Sorry, ignore this one. That's the next slide. So let's go to the next slide. Oh, wait a minute. No. I just haven't hit all the enter keys. I'm sorry. So self is going to be start time. Start time of hour equals 11. And so I'm assigning the value 11 to the hour variable of the start time object. That's how you read this. I've created an object called start time of type time. And now I'm setting the hour uh, instance variable to 11. And then I'm going to do set, do the same thing. I'm going to assign 10 to the instance variable minute. And what I have here is I have an object I've created from the class that has state information. Now I can do things with start time. Okay, actually. Once I call it here, start time equal time, open and closing parentheses, I can start doing things. That class comes to life. So how, how can I do multiple objects from the same class? Well, I have time, and I've got my uh, constructor. And so what do I do? Well, I know I did start time. I've done this before. It's on the last slide. Start time equals time, and then I've set it to hour 11, in this case, minute 11. Um, so I'm creating an object of type time, and I'm assigning it to the variable start time. Did that on the last slide. So so now I'm defining a new one, OK? I am defining a second one called stop time. Stop time, the, this, this line of code says the variable stop time is equal to a new object created from the class time. And in this case, I'm going to set it, set the hour to two and the minute to three. So here on the right hand side, you can see that I have stop time and start time. And they're both separate objects created from the same thing. Now let's delve somewhat into this constructor, OK? Because there's lots you can actually do with a constructor. It can have more than just self. Um, every class has to have a constructor. And it's something that a lot of new programmers forget. They forget to to um, to create the constructor, and all of a sudden they don't know why their class doesn't work. And you have to have the constructor. Um, 
They're a function that's called by Python when you create the object. And you can pass arguments to that constructor. So how do we pass arguments to a constructor? Well, I'm going to compare what we've just looked at to what arguments with a constru or constructor with arguments looks like. So I'm going to have class time. That's the same with or without constructor arguments. I'm going to have def underscore underscore init underscore underscore self when you have arguments. And when you don't, sorry, when you don't have arguments on the left hand side. On the right hand side, when you do have arguments, you're going to have self. And then you're going, in this case, I'm going to have the values or parameters that accept the values of the two instance variables. Now the instance variables look somewhat the same. In the previous example, we had self.hour equals zero. Now we have self.hour equals hour. In the previous example, I had self.minute equals zero. Now I have self.minute equal minute because I can pass data into the constructor and actually make my code less complex. I can write fewer lines of code by doing this. Sorry about the squeak. That's my dog playing with a toy. Um, so on the left-hand side, I have start time equals time, my type time. And on the right-hand side, the comparator is start underscore time equals 11 comma 11, because that's what I'm doing. Now, one of the things that, that throws people off initially is that... Um, they see self, hour, and minute in the constructor, so they think they have to pass in three things. But you don't. You only pass in for the number of arguments that you have after the self. And by the way, self has to come first, always. In an instance method, self has to come first. So, big deal. So now I have these two lines of code on the left, that I didn't have to put on the right. So that's a big deal. You don't have to do it. You have fewer lines of code. And when you're thinking about complex code, this, this type of stuff that seems a little small right now actually becomes big because you're not constantly writing these extra lines of code. And by the way, um, a constructor with arguments is a best practice in the industry. If you've got a constructor and you've got to pass values to the constructor, you have arguments for that constructor. Okay, but you can also define instance methods. So I just defined that constructor, but I want to define other things because what good does this do me if I can have functions and variables all packaged up together? Um, what good does that do me? Well, it does you more good when you can also package up the instance methods. So I have my class time, and I'm going to start using the constructor with arguments because it's best practice. So now I'm going to create something else. I have just created another function, def print time self, and then I'm going to have it do something. So Def, when I'm defining an instance method, it's just like defining any other function. You start with the keyword def. Then you have the name. Print underscore time is the name. Now, in this case, I have self as the argument. So when I call it, I won't actually send any information to it. But I will also use self.hour and self.minute. So self is what's used here, and that's the reference to the object. All right, so how do I call an instance method? Whoops, I'll fix that. This is my bad. Let me fix this really quick. I missed that one. All right, do that again. Okay, so I have my class. 
I'm using my constructor with arguments and actually using it correctly now. And I've got my instance method print time. So I'm going to create a start time object and I'm going to create my stop time object. So how do I call this instance method? Well, let's look. I call start time dot print. There's that dot again. And that says, from my object start time, call the print function. And again, I saw it call the print underscore time function. And again, in print time, you don't see anything passed. You see no parameters passed. But in print time defined in the class, there's self. And that's because Python takes care of that self for you. Python says, from whence did I come? And that self says, OK, right now I just came from start time. And so when I do that, I'm going to use hour from start time, and I'm going to use minute from start time, and it's going to print time is 1, 11, colon 11. So now if I have another object that I've created, I do stop time. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to call print time. Again, it's going to be object name dot the function. Open and closing parentheses if there are no other arguments, if there's only self. So this time I'm going to get the information from the stop time object. And I'm going to end up printing 2 colon 3 because that's what my print function tells me to do. So that's what an instance method is, and you're relying on self. It, the, the first place a lot of students get tripped up on objects is self when it comes to Python. Some languages, you don't have to worry about having that special thing. They just automatically know the object that it came from. Python doesn't. You have to tell it where it came from by the word self. OK, so special methods. There is something called overloading. And some languages allow it, and some languages don't. Python allows it. And what you can do is you can overload operators, like the double equal sign, like less than, like greater than. And this is also a way to make your code to have less code, OK? Um, so that you're not, you know, if I'm trying to decide if one object is the same as the other object, which means the values in the objects are the same, I'm going to have to write lines of code, check however many values I have to check. To avoid that, I can overload an operator and have the class do that for me. So that's what I want to do. And um, so, if I wanted to overload the double equal sign, I could just define a, um, a function called underscore, underscore, equal, underscore, underscore. I'd have self and another argument for the other object of the same type that is coming in. Um, so let's talk about overloading the double equal sign and stir. OK, I've got my class. And I did it again. My apologies, people. I'm sorry about that. OK, let's do that. I don't know why I did that this time. So I have my constructor. And now I am i don't want to use print time. I don't want to use that as the instance method. I want to make it more um, intuitive to Python. So I want um, something that will automatic, automatically convert my time class into a standard string format. So here I have stir self, and then it's got a print for self hour and self minute. And I apologize again. I did not look these over well enough. OK. All right, let's do that again. So I'm going to define 
The first one is Stir Self. And I'm going to, it's the same print time, but this time I can call it differently. Um, and then there's the double equal sign. So underscore, underscore, EQ, underscore, underscore is the way to overload something like the double equal sign. And Zybooks has a complete list of these, and there's basically one for every operator. And when we go over the um, the class and how to use that class in a little bit, you'll see that I've overloaded several of them. Um, so when I overload equal sign, what am I doing? I'm checking the variables against each other. I've got self, which will be the object that it's called from, or the object on the left-hand side. And in this case, other will be the object on the right-hand side. And if all the variables are the same, if all the variables are not the same, then I'm going to return false. Otherwise, I'm going to return true. A double equal sign will only ever, no matter how you're using it in Python, result in a true or a false. So I can overload that operator and do the same thing how I want it to do. So if I go over and I look at oh, using an overloaded stir function, the underscore, underscore, stir, underscore, underscore. Boy, I apologize. I did not read these things over well at all. I do not mean to be fixing them right now. But I'm going to so that when we go through this, they're not completely confusing. Okay. Let's play this one again. All right. So I have my class time. I've got my constructor with arguments. I've got the stir method. And I've got the overlo overloaded equal method. This time we're just going to look at stir. On the next one, we'll look at the double equal on the next slide. So I'm going to create my object. I've got start time with our and minute as 11. I've got stop time with hour as 2 and minute as 3. If I want to just print start time, that's all I have to do is say print start time. I don't have to remember the name print underscore time. I don't have to do any of that. All I have to do is call that print function. And what Python is going to do is it's going to say, okay, the class, the type that this object came from has an overridden string. So I'm just going to convert that to a string and pass it right into the print function. And so then I'm going to call print on stop time because I can do that. Same thing's going to happen. I'm going to have the hour and the minute that come from stop time and the time is going to be 2 colon 3. So overloading the double equal sign. Just printed that whole class on its own because we don't need to watch them line by line. Okay, so now I have a start time and I have a stop time. And I want to know if they're the same, if they're equivalent. How do I know if they're equivalent? Because I can use the double equal sign. So when I have start underscore time is I'm asking here, is start time the same as stop time? Well, I get to define that because I defined the class. I can say, what does equal mean? Well, in this case, I say that equal means that the hour from the object, from the left-hand side object, is the same as the hour from the right-hand side object, and that the minute from the left-hand side object is the same as the minute from the right-hand side object. And I apologize again. I'm going to fix this. And we will start again. Okay. So there's our class in much better shape. I've created an object start time and an object stop time. And now we'll get to the meat of this. So start time is the left-hand side. Stop time is the right-hand side. So if I look at the left-hand side, I'm going to have self hour and self minute. And if I look at, sorry, the right-hand side, then I'm, that's my comparator. So I have 
self other, self is start time, other is stop time. Because they're a type, I can pass them around as variables. I just pass everything at once as a variable. And in this case, I'm going to return false because they're not the same. But I could have defined equal underscore underscore eq underscore underscore as anything I wanted to because I'm deciding what equality means here. And that's actually a very powerful thing. Okay. So I'm now going to talk about making my own module. We're going to see this in just a minute. Um, I have this class and I've got several things that are um, overloaded. I've got the constructor. Oh, goodness. All right. All right. So I've got this whole class. And I could, I could have a much larger class if I wanted to. And I've got some, I've got the constructor with the underscore underscore knit. I've overloaded the stir. I've overloaded equal and I've overloaded not equal to. And I've also defined an instance method called diff because I want to know the difference between um, the object that I am, the, the, the object that I have and another object. And how do I want to do that? Well, I'm going to create an object of type time called difference. I'm going to have hour equals self hour minus other hour, minute equals self minute minus other minute, and I'm going to return my object difference. So right there, I have a very simple class where I can say, hey, give me the difference. Now, this is all in a file called time.py. Time.py is just the name of the Python file. That's all it is. It could have been fred.py. But that the name of that Python script is going to be the name of your module. So there's a one-to-one -one correlation. Okay, so how am I going to use my module? Well, I have a, brand, a couple brand new keywords. I have the word from and I have the word input. From is a keyword that tells Python to expect the name of a module. So that thing right after from has to be the name of the module. Time is the name of my module. I am going to then tell Python to get something from that module. Now what does import really do? What import really does is it kind of copies whatever I'm telling it to copy out of that module and it puts it into the memory space of my running Python script so I have access to it. And this is important. Sometimes modules have thousands and thousands of classes. Because somebody else wrote them and that's what they did. They, they wanted to have a math module that had every possible thing you could think of. They wanted an OS module that had every possible thing you can think of. So oftentimes I don't want to import the whole thing. I want to import a part of it and that's what this particular syntax does. It says from a module give me something specific and in this case I'm going to import the time class. So that's the name of the class to import. And I'm going to then create start time, stop time, and I'm going to say, you know, start time. If start time is the same as stop time, then print tie. Otherwise, give me a difference and print it. So time.py goes there. And I don't know why my time word didn't show up there, but that's the name of the class. And then you just use it like you would use time if it were part of the program. So let's go over the labs, and then we're going to switch to PyCharm. 
So Lab 8.9, what you have to do is you have to define a class and then you have to use it. So we're defining the information about a car because that's what a class does. It defines something about something that will really happen. And there's all kinds of cars you can have. You can have a Mustang. You can have a you know Prius. You can have all kinds of cars. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define my constructor. My constructor is going to be an underscore, underscore, knit, underscore, underscore. Don't forget the self. And I have here three variables. So I'm going to want three additional arguments in the constructor. Um, I'm going to define a function to calculate the current value. And you're going to want to take as parameters the current year. Don't forget the self. Don't forget the colon on any of this. And then I'm going to set there's a depreciation rate, uh, there's the age of the car, I'm going to calculate the value of the car based on its age, and then I'm going to set the current value of the car. So here I have the current value of the car. It's an instance variable. And in this case, I'm not going to actually return it. I'm just going to set it on the class because I've only got model year and purchase price. So the current value is going to come in when I calculate the age of the car. And I'm going to define a print function. The, I'm going to overload the underscore, the stir function. And then I'm going to uh, print out all the car's information. So that's your class definition right there. Now I'm going to use that to define a couple of objects. So the user's going to tell me the year, the user's going to tell me the price, and the user's going to tell me the current year. I'm going to create a car object and set it to a variable called my car. I'm going to set the model year, I'm going to set the purchase price, I'm going to calculate the current value of the car, and then I'm going to print that car out. So this basically uses pretty much everything we've done in this class, or in this lecture. So now I've got another one. I'm going to define a team. So I've got a team of people. And I'm going to have a constructor that's going to set the name of the team. And it's going to set the number of wins to zero. So it's just going to set a couple of basic values that I don't have to pass in because I want these values to just be that way until I change them. So I'm going to create a team object. And I'm going to have the user input the number of wins, the name, and the losses. So this is an, uh, an instance where you would not necessarily have arguments in your constructor. You could, but you don't have to. Um, you want to set the team name. You want to set the number of team wins. And you want to set the name of the team. And then you want to calculate this win percentage. Um, so we're going to call the win percentage function here, do all these lovely calculations. And then we're going to print out something. If it's greater than or equal to 0.5, then we're going to print congratulations. Otherwise, we're going to um, print out the team and say it has a losing average. So again, very similar to 8.9, very similar to what we've seen. So let's go on and actually look at some code. Yes. Yes, so it does store the code for later use. It absolutely stores the code for later use. And we're about to see that. So here is my pie charm. And here is my time.py file. OK, this is a little bit bigger. It has more stuff in it than the classes we saw in um, our the presentation just because this won't fit on a slide. So I have a class called time. Okay, It's in a module called time.py. And by the way, the class name and the module name don't have to be the same. And you can have multiple classes in a module definition. You can have multiple classes in any script. So here. I have my constructor with three arguments. 
and I'm going to set them and then I have my stir to print it out and you'll notice this one has seconds as well and then I've defined a less than and I've defined a greater than and I've defined an equal to and then I've defined my diff so this is my blueprint for what I want time to look like and it's it's very what I have been able to do is break down the code into very small chunks and say on this class do this chunk of work on this class do this chunk of work so I don't have to do this all over the code I don't have to have this everywhere I want to compare two times I have it in the class and it's an overloaded operator so I don't even have to worry about it so what I'm doing is I am reducing the complexity and I'm reducing the number of lines of code and I want to do that because it makes me a more efficient programmer and it, it usually ends up in higher quality code um, so those are my overloaded and then I have my diff which is my instance method so it's going to take self and other now you'll notice that the less than the greater than the equal to the overloaded operators all take self and other oh I'm sorry I needed to make this bigger didn't I I apologize let's do this we'll move this whoops we'll move this over so the overloaded operators all take a self and an other because they're going to have a left hand side and a right hand side stir only takes the object that it's coming from because it doesn't need to do a comparison any operator that doesn't comparison is going to need to take two objects just like my instance method diff is going to take two objects it's going to take the object to the left hand side of the period and it's going to take um, the object that is passed in so let's go see how this works so I've got this stopwatch and I've got some functions in here okay so this is just my interpretation of a stopwatch so um, first this is my import statement and we'll see what happens to that in a minute and I'm importing random because I just didn't want to import I just didn't want to input a lot of numbers so I have defined in my script because I'm going to run stopwatch I'm not going to run the module time.py I have defined some functions and then I've got my main going on down here so what do the functions do well first I'm going to populate the race because like I said I don't want to input in this I just didn't want to input a lot of variables so I have something that will populate a race and I've got my race as a dictionary and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, basically get some random numbers you know an hour is between 1 and 12 a minute is between 1 and 60 and a second is between 1 and 60 and I'm going to create a time object with hours minutes and seconds and then I'm going to um, add that time to the interval and there are three intervals there's stop middle and end um, and I have some competitors that I'm passing in as well and then I'm gonna um, set up my race of the competitor and I'm going to say these are their three times out you know stop middle sorry um, the interval each interval is going to have a time and then my race for that competitor I'm going to add that time for that interval so I want to know who started first and then I want to know who's faster in the middle and I want to know who won so who started first well I have my competitors the interval that I want and the race so I've just got a dictionary called speedy start I've got speedy start of competitors of zero because I'm going to use the first competitor and is going to be the race because that's all their times of the competitor based on the interval that I've passed in 
So this is just to say, for the first competitor, I'm getting their start time. And then I'm going to go and just go through a loop. For each competitor, I want to, um, sorry, yeah, for each competitor, I want to take a look at what their start time was, and I want to compare it. So I have, this is speedy start of competitors of counter is less than the my comparator here. And this less than we're actually going to see is going to go into that time module, and it's going to do the less than from there. And then eventually I'm going to return the, the the racer that had the speediest start. I'm doing the, a very similar thing for faster in the middle. I'm just looking at the middle interval. And then I'm going to see who won. So I'm looking at the final interval. So it's very similar code. And then down here in the main, I've got the tortoise and the hare, and I've got start, middle, and end. And I'm going to populate the race by calling my populate race method. I'm going to say who started first, and then it's four keys in first start. I'm going to print, hey, who's the speediest? And then for middle, I don't know why that's not in there. Okay. And then for middle, I'm going to do the same thing. And then for who won, I'm also going to do the same thing. So this is, this is much more complex than we have looked at in the past. But I really think that it's important to kind of see how something comes together. And this would not be uncommon to write like this if you were actually writing a program. Um, and so I think it's kind of important as the last class to see something a little more complex. So let's do this. Let's step through this in the debugger, because you know I like my debuggers. Um, Wait a minute. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. No wonder. Okay. Stopwatch. All right. So we're going to, we have our competitors. We're just going to set our competitors. And actually what I want to make sure I do here is I want to stop here, stop here, stop there. There, there, and there. Okay. So I'm going to define my competitors. I'm going to go in here and just show you what populate race does. It creates um, a my race dictionary, and then I create an intermediate dictionary, and then I create hours, minutes, seconds, and now I'm going to create the time. So hours, minutes, and seconds are just variables inside this function. Now I'm about to go into the constructor. So when I step over that method, that time with those arguments in it, I step right into that time module. So I'm inside the time module now, and I'm going to say hours is hours, minutes is the minutes that I passed in, and seconds is the seconds that I passed in. And if I look at variables, you'll see hours, minutes, and seconds. And you'll see this self guy down here. And this self guy has hours and minutes, and he will eventually have seconds. So I'm going to step over that. And now I have time. And time has hours, minutes, and seconds. And it is of type time, because I have created my own type. So I'm going to do the same thing again. It's going to go back into there. And then I'm going to create it one more time. So I'm going to stop here on my race, because you don't need to watch me do that. OK. So I have created a dictionary called my race. And what does my race have in it? Well, my race, where is it, is right here. And it has the tortoise and the hare. And you will see that the tortoise has start, which is the key of the dictionary. And then it's got a time object. And I've got middle, and it's got a time object. And I've got end, and it's got a time object. 
And that's because I can use them as a type. I can use them just like an int or a float or a string. Because it's a type, I can add an object to a dictionary. I can add an object to a list. So I can do anything with this. I can do with any other object in Python, any other type in Python. So now I've populated my race, and I say, oh, who started first? So let's step into here. And what I really want to look at is this guy. So we're just going to continue on, and we're going to be here. Speedy start, and then this STO, so it's the next competitor. So, um, so who what, what is the speedy start less than the other thing? So if I step into this, I am now in underscore, underscore, LT, underscore, underscore. So I can check whether or not the object from the left-hand side is less than the object from the right-hand side. And I did that with just the less than. Again, I've reduced complexity in the code. I don't have to have this hanging around everywhere. I don't have to have a programmer trying to remember what I call, you know, less than for time. Did I call it time underscore less than? Did I call it less than underscore time? They just have to use the less than, less, the less than sign. So I'm just going to go here, and it's true. So my speedy start is actually going to be the second competitor, and I'm done. So speedy start, first start now, it becomes an object. See, first start is the hair, and it's got the um, time object in it. So now I'm going to just... For key and speedy start, I'm just going to print out on the console. But when I said print, because it's a time object and I've overloaded underscore underscore stir, all I do is I come in here and so every single time it will print identically with different values. So if I look at the console, I'm going to say speediest starter was hair with a time of 11, 10, 49. And then I'm going to do the same thing here with middle. We'll just continue on. And then end. So that is what happens when you're using a module. And that module is a class. And it's been defined so that it has all of these different functions in it. And if you look here, I'm not worried a lot about what's happening inside that the time class. I'm trying to handle the, the functionality for how I'm going to figure out what's going on in my race. I'm not, uh, I don't care how the time object decides whether something is less than or greater than. I care whether or not it is less than or greater than. So I can leave that less, than, that less than overloading to the person who wrote the time class, and I can worry about how I'm going to make sure my race is fair. So um, does anybody have any questions? You guys, we can open it up if you need to or want to, um, or we can call it a great class. So I think I'm going to say going once, going twice. I hope that you guys have found these videos helpful. And I hope that your future programming is an amazing journey. So I'm going to stop uh, the recording, and I'm going to stop sharing. And you guys have a wonderful, wonderful.